You know, you can call yourself Christian, but not actually know God. In fact, there's a lot of Christians that claim they know God, but they really don't. And I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to say, right? Because this is going to make some people mad, but this is the truth. You need to listen to this very carefully. God, Jesus Christ, the one true God is not the God in your mind that you've made up. He's not the God of your imagination. He's not the God of your denomination. I know that that made somebody mad. Somebody clicked off because of that. Somebody's writing a hate comment right now because I said that, but it's the truth. Jesus is not the the God of a single denomination. And if you think that you could not be more wrong. And he's not the God of endless tolerance either. God, Jesus Christ is the one true God, right? Because there's a lot of false ideas of Jesus going around. There's a lot of false Jesus is going around. There's a lot of Jesuses that people believe in that aren't the real Jesus. The only real Jesus is the Christ of the Bible. That is it. See, I don't want to lead you in a wrong direction, so I want to try and articulate this in a very specific way. To know God is to know the word and to be a doer of the word. See, because you can't just know the word. First of all, the Bible says that knowledge puffs up. And if I'm being vulnerable with you for a second, there are spots in my life where I got so obsessed with just learning the scripture, learning theology, that it was like, I almost neglected the relationship side of it. And I was really happy when my pastor actually brought that up to me because it almost kind of looks like a gut feeling like, dang, maybe I am missing a piece of this right now. I have been I have been neglecting that side of this relationship. But also there's atheistic people that study the word, right? They know the Bible. They might know the Bible better than most Christians, but that doesn't make them Christian. But Jesus said explicitly in John 14 and a bunch of other places, right? He said it more than once. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will be a doer of the word. And if you love God and you are keeping his commandments, the fruits of your life will show that. The way that you speak, the way that you treat other people, the way that you conduct business, the way that you work at your job, how disciplined you are, the way that you do everything should have fruits attached to it because of the God that you follow. And then finally, you're seeking to actually know God. Do you actually seek? It's a relationship, man. You should have fellowship with God. Do you look to speak with God? Do you look to hear from God? Do you talk to God? I think there's almost like three levels to it. And maybe my mind will have a revelation past that to where it's even more than that. But I think it's three levels. It's knowing the word, it's being a doer of the word, and it's having that relationship. That's how you get to know God. You need all three. I used to really struggle with lust, and I guess it still does kind of catch up to me at night, especially, right? Once I slow down and like I'm trying to lay down and calm down and go to sleep, it's typically when it catches up, right? So something I started doing to really solve that and help aid that was I would listen to sermons as I was going to sleep, or I would even listen to the word as I was falling asleep. There's a James Earl Jones version on YouTube of the word that you can listen to. It's top tier. Most of the time, I would listen to a sermon. I think that's great. I also think it's great to learn from other people that know more than us, right? That's a great thing to learn scripture from other people. But in a sense, I also think it's a bit like supplementation, right? It's like taking supplements. Your food, the thing that you really need is the word of God, right? The the living water, the water that will never make us thirst again, like the Bible says, that's the word that's diving into Christ. That's not your denomination. That's not endless tolerance. That's not your church. That's not religion. That's Christ. That's the Bible. That's relationship with Christ. It's being led by the Holy Spirit. That's submission to God. I don't want the God of other people. I don't want the God of a denomination. I want the God of the Bible. I want to actually know who he is. I want to know what he wants. I want to be able to submit myself to him, the one true Christ. I made a video a few weeks ago talking about we should stop limiting God in our lives. We should profess him to be controller in every area of our life. We should look to have him help us. We should look to be submitted to him in every area of our life that we want to see improve. And this is why I can't really get behind denominations and stuff because some denominations will say, oh yeah, God used to heal people. He doesn't do that anymore. That died off with the apostles or with the disciples. I can't find that in scripture at all. I believe God heals people, right? Christ said himself in John 14, you will do greater things than I. If he was healing people, what are we supposed to do? There's other denominations that teach money is evil and that God wants people to be poor and poverty is piety, which once again, is not biblical. You can't find that in the scripture. The scripture does warn against the love of money, young rich ruler, which is Luke 18, I believe. It does warn against the love of money because that's idolatry, but it does not warn against the acquisition of wealth because the acquisition of wealth is inherently a biblical thing because it's abundance. Gold is even the thing that we use to represent money, right? Up until we started just printing money in the US endlessly, it was based on the gold standard. God gave us gold for 
from the very jump. It was in the garden, and the gold of that land was good. Abraham, the father of the faith, had the gold. They were, he was very specific about saying how Abraham was rich. Abraham was very rich in cattle, livestock, silver, and gold. There's plenty of verses that talk about how when you submit yourself to God, when you look to acquire godly wisdom, you will then stack riches. It's all over in Proverbs and everything. So why would I subscribe to the God of a denomination that then doesn't actually have the biblically accurate Christ? I'm not going to do that. And if I haven't made you mad yet, here you go. I got one that's going to make a bunch of people mad. You can't just claim to be Christian, get saved, and then go live a worldly life. That's not how it works. James writes, without works, faith is dead. I think it's James 2, 4 where he says that. See, if you're saved by grace through faith for works, if your works are dead, that's because you had no faith. If you had no faith, you probably never received the grace. I had a teacher in eighth grade who actually said that she was just going to live her life, do whatever, and then right before she would die, she would repent so that way she could go to heaven. That ain't biblical. I want the God of the Bible. I want to have a relationship with the God of the Bible, the God who can do all things, the limitless God, the endless God, the amazing God the awesome God, the God who saves, God who makes my way prosperous, the God who heals me, the God who makes everything in my life more abundant and helps me grow into the person I need to be so I can complete his mission. I can extend the kingdom for him because that's what he called me to do. And that's why I'm here. Why I'm here. Genesis 1, 2, 8, right? Be fruitful, do multiply, do replenish, do subdue and have dominion. Dominion is kingship, rule over, to be a king ruled by the king. And I think if you really want to know God, if you really want to have that relationship, it has to be the God of the Bible. That is it. Know the word, be a doer of the word, and actually seek to have that relationship. And I think that's when we can actually start to learn who God is because we can always learn more. I don't think it ever really ever stops. I think we're all baby Christians for our entire lives in a sense, because what God knows is infinite compared to what we know. But I do hope this blesses you. If you're a young Christian, you're on self-improvement. I have a free community down in the description that you can go join right now, completely free. There's also a guide in there on how I quit pornography. It's only like 15 minutes long and it's got a bunch of just tips that I basically just loaded into the video to help you out. It'd be something for you to take notes on. That would be really great. It'd probably help you out a lot. But I do hope this video blessed you. If it did, subscribe, like this video. I'm trying to post every single day. Stay blessed. Peace.